19 years ago, when I was working here as studio garden manager, I had the great opportunity to construct the rock garden. It was a lot of fun back in those days putting this together, and it's a lot of fun now to come out and see how things are doing. Of course, rock gardening got its start in England back in the 18th century. The naturalistic style of garden design was becoming popular. Gardeners would uh, be inspired by what they saw out in nature. They would try to recreate little wildflower meadows or maybe bubbling streams or water gardens, things like that. The more adventurous gardeners were those that had probably been hiking up in the Swiss Alps or some of the other rocky areas, and they wanted to create that rocky type of scenery in their own gardens. So they did this, and now all of our rock gardens today are the descendants of those first English mountaintop gardens. Well, I had so much fun putting this together all those years ago that I knew that when I had my own place, my own property, I would want to do my very own rock garden. And recently, I've had time to start working on that, and I'd like to show it to you. Here in the display gardens on my own property, I really like using rock. You can see I've used a lot of native sandstone to build the raised beds. And raised beds are awesome because it gives you the opportunity to create your own soil and the plants do so much better. But I also really like the look you get with the plants and the rock together. Well, in the rock garden that I wanted to create, I was very fortunate in that there were some sandstone rock on the property. I was able to get in there, clear out some vegetation, rent some equipment, and go in there and collect the rock for my rock garden. Now, the rock garden at the Oklahoma Gardening Studio Garden is based on sort of a prairie rock outcrop, something that maybe you would see in the prairies out here in central or western Oklahoma. Some rock, some empty space for plants, and a little bit more rock, and that kind of thing. When I set about to build my rock garden, I wanted to use a lot more rock. And also, the rock garden at Oklahoma Gardening is built on a slope. It's a beautiful setting. We were able to just kind of dig into the slope and place the boulders. Well, here I have no slope, so I brought in several loads of soil and I built up a mound or sort of built my own mountain. And coupling that with using a lot of rock, I feel like I've really been able to build my own little mountaintop garden. Now, when you're constructing a rock garden, I think it's a good idea to use the biggest rock that you can manage. Uh, rent the equipment, move the really large rocks into place because it'll be more impressive. I think it'll look a little more realistic. And another really good thing is that you can use more types of plants. If you use really small rocks, you have to go really tiny with the plant material Otherwise, the plants are gonna grow up too large and they're gonna cover up all the rock that you've worked so hard to get into place. Well, in uh, moving our rocks, I rented a skid steer loader, one that could lift about 3,000 pounds. And a couple of these boulders that we put in place are pushing about 3,000 pounds. And uh, when we put these in place, we made sure that uh, we got these two side by side. If you look close, you can kind of see the channel between these rocks. This is the way they were sitting out in the wild. This was uh, once one large boulder, and you can tell over time they kind of it kind of broke apart, and now it's two rocks. So we wanted to make sure we uh, utilized both of those rocks where we could put them together, like we did here, and we did want this garden to look somewhat natural, or at least an idealized natural uh, sort of uh, uh, creation. So some of the rocks, we, we took photos, we made notes of the arrangement and just the way they were uh, sitting out in the wild, and we brought those as a group and put those in the garden here, in the exact arrangement that they were out in nature. And at certain angles, you look at some of these arrangements and it looks like one giant rock. 
Another thing you can do to make sure your rock garden looks natural is to be careful when you're moving the rocks. Not only to uh, keep yourself safe and not hurt, harm your, your body, but also keep the rocks from getting scratched up and banged up. Uh, you don't want to use a front end loader to load them up and bang them around because we don't want to scratch up the surface. We want to keep them looking natural. Any scratches or marks or dings or breaks in the rock will change the color and it won't look consistent and it won't look quite as natural. So try not to scratch or scrape up your rock. I knew when I built the rock garden that I wanted to have a pathway going through it. A pathway I think is great because it lets you get up close and personal to some of the small plants and just experience the garden in a different way. And also having a pathway through a rock garden, it uh, just in and of itself, it helps create little pockets for plants where the, the stepping stones or the, uh, the changes in elevation uh, of these rocks next to some of the big boulders just gives you these nice little pockets uh, for planting plants in those little nooks and crannies. Now when we put the uh, pathway in place we borrowed a technique that uh, the Japanese garden of garden design um, uh, utilizes and that is to place the stepping stones where their longest axis runs perpendicular to the pathway. For example, I've got two rectangular pieces of paper here and the stones are laid out in this fashion where uh, this would be the line of the, the pathway with the, the longest axis running perpendicular to the path. The opposite of that would be to align the stepping stones like this and in a uh, pathway this way it kind of gives you the idea that you should speed up and walk fast through the garden, whereas if they're arranged in this fashion, it imparts the idea of walking slow through the garden and enjoying the garden a little bit more. Well, this garden is more about the rocks than it is about the plants. I wanna make sure that any plant I put in here is not gonna to get too large. I've done a lot of work putting the rocks in place and I don't want all of that to be covered up by the larger plants. Now, over the years, I will research different plants and try out new small perennials. I'll put in some small shrubs, maybe a few conifers and some bulbs uh, to see what's gonna work well in this garden. But uh, in the meantime, I've kind of filled it up with a few annuals. We got some of the little dwarf Serenita angelonias. We've got some, some fanflower or scavola, some zinnias, and a few other things. One of my favorite little annuals for the rock garden is this little yellow daisy right down here. This is the Dahlberg daisy. I love its bright yellow flowers and very delicate foliage. But these are annuals and these will reseed themselves. We'll see them popping up in different places and uh, I, I just love the look they, uh, they give you uh, in the rock garden. Well, thank you so much for letting me show you my new rock garden. I hope in the future I have the opportunity to uh, let you take a look at it again when we have a few more plants. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.